Hello, my name is Stacy Couch and my website is wildgratitude.com. I'm here today to share a story with you. And did, you might have noticed the hummingbird that just went by. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful spring day and I'm hanging out with the gooseberry flowers that the bees are, and hummingbirds are visiting today on this warm, windy spring day. Fairy tales. I've been getting more and more immersed in the magic of fairy tales the last couple of years, and it's uh, really serious business, actually. We tend to think of fairy tales for children, but they have deep wisdom for the soul. There's a reason why they have been passed down through the generations, because they carry a deep archetypal imprint uh, instructions for doing our soul work. The fairy tale that I'd like to share with you today is by Hans Christian Andersen, and it's called The Princess and the Pea. Many of you have probably heard it before, um, but let me refresh your memory. Let's dive in. Once upon a time, there was a prince, and this prince was ready to marry. He wanted to find himself a real princess. So he traveled all around the world, but none of the princesses would do because he was sure none of them were real. There was something not quite right. There was something missing in every one he met. Eventually he gave up, gave up his quest and returned home to his castle, downtrodden, defeated, and, and depressed at the loss of the dream that he had had for himself and his kingdom. Then one night, a terrible storm came ac across the land. The rain came down in sheets. It was black as night, except for the flashes, the blinding flashes of lightning that lit up all everything around. Somehow, within the castle, the old king was able to hear a knock at the gate in the midst of this terrible noise of the storm. He went out to the gate and opened it to find a young woman. She had soaking wet hair. The water, the rain was just pouring, streaming off the strands of her hair. Her clothes were so sodden that they clung closely to her body. She could barely move from the weight of them. And the rain went in the tips and out to the heels like a river out of her shoes. The old king was kind and he invited the princess in and she told him that she was a real princess. The wise old queen heard this and with a good dose of skepticism thought, let's see, let's try. Let's see if she really is a real princess. So the old queen went into the bedroom, the guest room, the guest quarters that she had set aside for the princess and took a small, dry, shriveled pea put it under the mattress. The queen then called for the servants to bring in 20 mattresses and 20 eider downs and to stack them so high, the servants also had to bring in a ladder for the princess to climb to get to the top of all of this bedding. The princess was very grateful for the dry clothes, the meal that the old king and queen gave her, and even more grateful when she saw this mountain of a bed that would be her place to rest for the evening. She climbed up the ladder and climbed in and, and bade the queen good night. And she was so exhausted that she fell asleep right away. But after a short time, ugh, something was ugh, bugging, poking her in the hip. Ugh, what is that? And so she rolled over, woke up halfway and rolled over. A few minutes later, ah, oh, something's in my rib now. Ah, oh, oh, how it really hurts. And so she rolled over again onto her stomach. Now something's in her cheek. Ah, oh, oh, what is that? And this is how she went on the whole night, the whole night, with some hard thing in this exuberantly luxurious pillow of softness that she'd been given. There was some hard thing that kept poking her and bruising her and causing her pain and keeping her awake the whole night. The next morning, she got up, 
got dressed, went to meet the king and queen in the dining hall. And the queen looked at the princess and asked, So how did you sleep, my dear? Ah, it was terrible, so badly, the princess replied. So badly, I have bruises all over my body. I don't know what it was, but there was some hard, small thing in that bed that just seemed to not ever leave me alone the whole night. And with a knowing grin, the queen called in her son and introduced him to the real princess. Right then and there, the prince proposed marriage and the princess accepted and the two reigned in the castle happily ever after. And to this day, that pea can be found in the Royal Museum. That is, if no one has stolen it yet. And now that is a real story. So what I have done for you is I have written my thoughts, my reflections, we'll say, on this story. I have written them out and I've posted the link for you uh, to this article in the uh, description of the video. So you can get a full fleshing out of what does all of this mean? How does this give us soul wisdom, right? But here I'd like to leave you with a couple of thoughts and then you can go and read the whole um, reflection on the story and how it gives instructions for the soul. Most of us, when we read this story as children, especially as girls, read the story from the perspective of the skepticism of the queen and, and how she needed to test the girl, the young woman, the princess. We read it from this perspective of that this princess is a prissy. She is a wuss. These, she's easily bothered by a pea. We don't want to be like that. We want to be strong women that have resolve, that aren't bothered by small things, that are able to get over them and get a good night's sleep. <laughs> but coming to this story as an adult, coming to this story from the perspective of the soul, we can see an immense valuation of what it means to be sensitive. So much in our culture these days, we suppress our sensitivity, our intuition. We try to hide it. It is seen as a weakness. But here is this king and queen who are supporting their son in finding a sensitive, intuitive princess. Because they understand, all three of them in that family do, understand the value of having someone that can intuitively pick up on a little problem before it becomes a big, unwieldy pea vine choking everything out in the kingdom. So this pea can be a seed of discontent or it can be a seed of change. And to have someone ruling that picks up that level, um, with that level of sensitivity, that beginning, that early beginning of something new, uh, gives you a chance to get ahead of it, to get out, to at least collaborate with it, but at least, um, and possibly even get out ahead of the change to work with it, rather than have it come in uh, unsuspectingly. So here, we have that idea, right, of sensitivity as being valuable. The prince will search all over the world for it. And then we have this other piece of the real princess. He wants someone who's real. In today's terms, what does that mean? That means someone who is authentic. What is authenticity? To live from one's soul, to live without all of the conditioning or in spite all of the conditioning, to listen to one's soul, to listen to one's intuition, and go with one's gut. These are all the things that make up a real or an authentic woman. So yes, we can see in this story an external royal family that values these things in a woman, but we also can pause to think of that castle being within, 
that castle and that royal family being the aspects, the ruling aspects of ourselves that value our own authenticity. That's thinking that not only do we have a princess within, but we have a prince and we have a king and a queen within. And all of them are coming together to, um, to place into power our authentic, intuitive selves. Amazing, right? Just from what's two pages <laughs> in the stories of Hans Christian Andersen, but so much wisdom for the soul. So I invite you to click on the link in the description of the video. That'll take you to a more extended and fleshed out reflection than what I've given you here. And I want to thank you for joining me.